Even in death, Mrs. Murray Mbabangira remains a coalescence. Unarguably, she sustains the accolade of a woman of substance. Murray Mbabangira walked through this earth with a rare gait. She carried her assignment with panache, and today, wherever she touched, her marks remain indelible. Until death took her away, the humble and modest upbringing which she had was not diminished. Murray Mbabangira said of her modest and decent upbringing, Growing up was an interesting experience. We were four girls and a boy. We were taught the science and art of keeping a home and a perfect union. This became my experience when I got married in 1969, and my husband had to leave me to fight in the war front to keep Nigeria together. That is the hallmark of a great woman, and she exhibited this trait very early in life. Her upbringing would later impact her entire life journey. That was vintage Mariam. In 1985, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida became the head of state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. By providence, Mariam became the first lady. Before the coming of Mariam Babangida on the scene, Nigeria's history did not have a record of any achievement of a first lady. In her brilliance, she articulated the classic role of the office of the first lady. With style, she embellished it with a mixture of her elegance and ravishing beauty. Mariam's husband, General Ibrahim Babangida, GCFR, retired. On reflection, recall what attracted him to Mariam in her days as a student of the Federal Training Center. It was a relationship beyond infatuation. I was a young officer in the war front, and we used to come to on break any time during the war. At that time, the family were living in Kaduna. One of my good friends and classmates, General Dubai, his father was the elder brother of my wife's uh, mother. So I was quite frequent and I was fairly well known in the house. And that's where the relationship started. The result of her love for humanity and articulation was the involvement of a pet project christened Better Life for Rural Women. The program was conceived to have a direct impact on the lives of rural women who were described as the most sidelined, most impoverished, and therefore most vulnerable in Africa. The objectives of the program were reduce maternal and child mortality rate by providing basic health care facilities for women, Provide income-generating opportunities through agriculture and cottage industries. Integrate rural women into national development plans. And above all, develop educational training for women. The Better Life Program has the interest and welfare of every woman, orphan, disabled, and the widow. This was what motivated us to research into widowhood practices throughout the country. Today, I am happy to say that the Better Life Program efforts in solving the problem of widows are gradually paying off. Understanding who she was, Mariam Babangida gave her all for this project, and in the end, she reached the utopia. In no time, the Better Life Program attracted recognition from across Africa and the global community. The daily engagements foisted on her by the pet project stretch her elastic capacity, and always she had her hands full with invitations to global events. Never was the office of the First Lady of Nigeria so revered. She was a pace setter, and her motherhood was driven by her passion for women empowerment. More than three decades after, the zeal with which this program was pursued is yet to be equaled. Mariam Babangida understood power. She wielded it to achieve the objective of her pet project. The Better Life for Rural Women lifted many rural women from the dust of poverty. Better Life for Rural Women was a project driven by a genuine concern for the plight of Nigerians living in slums. 
tribes like Maroko, Makoko, and Ajegunle. These habitations painted a picture of scholar, hopelessness, and utter deprivation in Lagos, which was at that time the federal capital territory. It was this symphony of contradiction that ignited Murray's passion for creating a platform through which rural dwellers, in particular her women folk, could be empowered. The Better Life program also had a health component. Mariam was concerned about the high maternal and infant mortality at the time. Apart from providing local birth attendants with modern knowledge on childbearing, she also established and equipped maternity homes to eliminate the hazards associated with long distance between communities and the nearest government hospitals. This effectively reduced the rate of deaths, some of which are as a result of complications from lack of prompt medical attention. Mariam Babangida and her Better Life program raised the health component of Nigeria at that time to a global standard, working closely with the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, to ensure coverage of the six childhood deadly diseases of polio, cholera, measles, diphtheria, diarrhea, and whooping cough. With the program's attainment of global status, Mrs. Mariam Babangida soon assembled some of the best brains in the country to form a think tank team that would pilot her dreams. With this team, women issues became the subject of national focus. This culminated in the establishment of the National Commission for Women and eventually metamorphosed into a Ministry of Women Affairs. With time, Mariam Babangira extended her pet project to accommodate children education. She realized the role education could play in the lives of a people, particularly the indigent children. To further strengthen this vision, even when she is out of office, she established the now famous El Amin International School for the sole aim of providing quality education for children of both the poor and the rich. She said of El Amin, our concept of establishing the El Amin International School was to provide an opportunity for children of the rich, the not so rich, and the poor to enjoy qualitative education through a conducive learning environment that will ginger the students to exploit their natural talents. The first couple of years, I must say it was quite tough because there was a lot of anxiety of what will befall the school after she's gone because she was such a strong character. She was such a ever-present person and she was always there. So it was a very big shoe to fill. But thank God we were able to uh, sustain her legacies there and we're also able to uh, sustain the academic performances and all the things that she held so dear to her in the school, the discipline and so on. So for me, it's been 10 years since her demise. We celebrated the Founders Day a few weeks ago. And in particular, it was a special moment for us because for me, 10 years down the road, we are still here, we are still doing what she loved so much and we are still excelling in the sphere of education management. What next? is her last dream that she had to complete the chain in the education management, which is to set up the university. And I'm grateful to God to be able to be the one who would fill in that missing, missing link. Available data from the National Commission for Women show that before the inception of the Better Life program, there were 378 cooperative groups, but this rose to 9,492 with the Better Life program. On November 12, 2008, Mariam Babangira gave a speech at the launch of an appeal fund for adult literacy and acquisition facility in a village called Sokakahuta in Niger State. At that occasion, it was as if she had a premonition of her death. To the beneficiaries of this facility, let me tell you that you are special to me, not just because of your energy, but because of the name of your village. So Kakahuta, which roughly translates to bring down and rest. I marked my birthday on November 1, which brings me to an eight. The passionate and glamorous Mariam surrendered to the cold hands of death on December 27, 2009. Kasim Afebwa, a spokesman 
to former President Ibrahim Babangida at GCFR. He recounts the pain they shared when death suddenly took her away. I left my village on Saturday back to Abuja. I just got to Gwagwalada by Giri Junction when I got a call from IBB. He said, Prince, I said, yes, sir. He said, Madam couldn't make it. We'll be coming with her body tomorrow. I said, what? He said, yes. He said, go on. He said, go and issue a statement, official statement, announcing her death. My vehicle skidded off the road. Thank God that I didn't have a fatal accident. God, the shock was too palpable. As a former military officer, one of the characteristics of a good soldier is adaptability. To, to be able to adapt to any changing um, circumstances. And over the years I have been able to adapt to the current situation. That's a fact. That's a hard reality of life. There's nothing I could do about it. So I have to adapt. She was mourned by so many people, both at home and in the diaspora. A flurry of tributes poured in at the death of Mariam. Admiral Augustus Aikomo was the vice president in the military government of Ibrahim Babangida. He was closely associated with the former first lady. He wrote in his tribute, For my family and me, it has not been easy to grapple with the reality that this phenomenal lady has left us in body, but obviously not in spirit and memory. She was and continues to be an epitome of goodness, fellowship, and integrity. In an editorial of January 6, 2010, this day newspaper wrote about Maria. Maria Babangida, the wife of Nigeria's former military president, was easily the country's most prominent first lady, both in terms of impact and towering personality. The editorial concluded that the best tribute that can be paid to her now is for women in similar positions to overcome their ego and vanities of the present existence to affect others, especially the less privileged. She was one woman in many who institutionalized the office of the First Lady. Beyond the glamour and paraphernalia of office, she tossed women in the remotest areas of Nigeria. Noteworthy is that these true Nigerians were available for everyone to see. There was no dichotomy between North and South, neither was there any between Christians and Muslims during the IBB era. The life and time of Mariam Babangida teaches a lesson in humanity, resilience, hard work, dedication and selfless service to the cause of the underprivileged. She had the opportunity to take to opulence and ostentatious living. Instead, she chose to stay with the wretched of the earth, women, indigent children, and the needy. Her global acclaim is equally numerous. In 1991, for instance, she shared the African Prize for Leadership with the Kenyan Professor Wangari Matai for both women's contribution to a sustainable end to hunger in their lands. The Mariam Babangida National Center for Women Development, which she founded in 1993, focuses on research, training, and mobilization of women for self-emancipation, among other values. She was known by many as the greatest first lady that has walked the land of Africa. And to some, she was the ideal role model for African women and women across the globe. Such effervescent soul as Mariam Babangida is not easily forgotten in the labyrinth of life. On a daily basis, an event could always happen that tells me, oh, I wish she were there. A, B, C, D would not have happened. Or A, B, C, D would have happened. This is on a daily occurrence.